Good morning, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading reports for July 12th, 2014. The market remains in bullish quiet conditions on an annual basis using weekly RSI 14. Market is pulled back into neutral, high end and neutral at 70 on a score of 0 to 100. Shorter term market condition, the 10 day NDX has it right in the middle of neutral at 51 out of 100. Looking at the market mosaic price with respect to the 200 day moving average is at 7.82%. So we've got almost 6% cushion to sideways markets, but we're yellow bullish. So that degraded a little bit. Slope of the 50 day moving average declined a little, but it still remains white bullish. The ADX moved from strongly uptrend to neutral trend with a reading of 23.5, but bull still in charge. ATR percentage is at the higher end of quiet at 0.64%. The risk index is the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10 period moving average. The threshold is 1.0 for the boundary between risk off and risk on. It's reading right now rounded off to 1.00, so we're in risk off conditions, meaning that riskier assets are not favored. And that's a cautionary tale. No reason to exit, but it does say ensure that your stops are properly placed. If we take that score of 1.0 and compare it to the last 5,000 trading days and find the standard deviation, we get a risk Z score of minus 0.09. This histogram shows the last 90 days of that indicator. And you can see that we've just now dipped into the negative after a very long run of uh, favorable conditions. Monthly rebalancing continues to hold these three positions in each of those portfolios, and then the current leaders inside these populations based on the closing prices on Friday. I still see being dominated by the U.S. and technology and uh, energy as well. In ETF2, the theoretical exposure is at 90%, and the model portfolio is at 100%. This is the blended monthly rebalancing uh, for several ETF populations. Uh, technology displaced the uh, real estate for the first time in a while. And even U.S. small caps are now on a, on a buy signal. Uh, inside ETF 32, uh, agriculture, blended commodities, and uh, the European 350 index are on cash signals. Everything else on buy signals, again, being dominated by the U.S. Brazil remains pretty strong, but really more on the basis of a six-month return than the three-month return where it's cooling off a bit. This is the ETF Max. This is looking at the top uh, 40 or so uh, symbols in a population of about 1,300, dominated by India, uh, Argentina has now moved up into the top uh, top 10. Silver and copper miners, there's some gold, more India, India all over the place, pharmaceuticals, palladium, oil services, so we see some energy uh, creeping in here as well. Biotechs are still doing well. This is that same lens looking at the S&P 500, the top 40 or so. And this will also show the uh, sector that they are a member of, the sector spider. So if you're doing drill down, you, know, you can find out who the leaders are. Uh, technology, energy, um, uh, consumer, dis uh, consumer staples all reflected in here. Cell gene should be of interest with green and yellow. And uh, Intel and C.H. Robinson, again, green and white. Uh, Gilead Sciences, green and white. Netflix, Apple, and Iron Mountain Incorporated, green and white. That's an indication that, the, that their outperformance is, on a, is due to more recent price changes as opposed to inheriting long-term price advantage. So earlier in the life cycle. This is the market health check. The um, vertical blue lines represent 10, 20, and 30 days worth of look back. The horizontal red lines reflect 
Uh, price levels that were once resistance and are now acting as support. The dark blue shaded area is the river. That's the 30 period Bollinger Band plus or minus one. The lighter blue shaded area is the floodplain, 30 period Bollinger Band plus or minus two. The outer red envelope is the plus or minus three Bollinger Band. So we have um, this pink shaded area is the dragon that is a accelerated uh, river, if you will. It uh, is a 10 period Bollinger Band plus or minus 0.5. It's six times more adaptive than the river and it's starting to roll over a little bit here and you can see that there's about four uh, PSAR dots above uh, indicating some weakness here in this upward move. But the uh, market has come right back to the edge of the river and found uh, in this finding support the, the uh, move Thursday was an opportunity for the long side with a gap down to the Bollinger Band mean which held and then gave us two follow through days. So uh, a already a, a trade in the money for the agile there. The last time that it found support at the Bollinger Band mean and held was back here at the end of this uh, sideways quiet channel looking formation and then gave us a nice run from uh, you know 188 to 198 so a 5% gain. Um, the thick black lines are a 30 period RAF regression channel with the regression line in the middle and then the outer channel formed by the maximum excursion from the uh, regression line during the look back period which happened on Thursday morning. Uh, price has now fought its way back up almost to the midpoint. The blue lines are the 10 period regression channel. Price is well within the uh, middle of both of those channels and the dragon is resting on the north shore of the river. Price is at the edge of the uh, river and floodplain. So uh, if we get any kind of follow through in retrospect this will look very much like a uh, buy on dip opportunity with support at the lower channel having held, support of the Bollinger Band mean having held. We're in the green zone, that's my intuition uh, about my intraday bias. When we're in the green zone here north of that Bollinger Band mean, my instinct is to go long as soon as I see evidence of strength. If we're in the yellow zone, I wait to see market direction before I go. And then if we were in the red, or in this case falling out of the floodplain, I'd have a short side bias. This uh, sine wave looking indicator here is the slope of that 30 period regression line. And you can see that it peaked back here about 10 days ago and has rolled off. We're still above the dotted line, so the slope of that 30 is still positive. That's a good thing. Uh, this would be a natural place for uh, it to resume and go north if we're going to continue with this uh, bullish move. You can see our cushion here to the 200-day moving average. Uh, we have been overbought for a long time in the last 40 or 50 days. We're now right at the at the 50-yard line here on uh, Williams percent R. Percent price oscillator also is giving us kind of a weak, uh, a weakening signal for the market with the jaws now open to the downside. So more pullback would not be impossible. So I would see that as. Uh, a pullback to about 102 and a half down here, uh, just at the southern edge of the river, 103. Uh, that would still, we would still retain a bullish outlook, um, even if it came back that far. Um, this pink line is reflecting that uh, really the return of the bull requires a close above about 200. Um, to resume this bullish trend that's still a psychologically important price level. Looking at the ETF2 indexes, uh, one of the 10 regional indexes on a cash position, that's the European 350, that's the weakest of the sectors. The other nine are on cash signals, and so that gives us 90% invested, 10% cash in the theoretical model, bull quiet. The S&P at 76 is stronger than the globals at 72, so the U.S. is favored over the globals right now for this week. Inside the U.S., strength is in technology with an 80, then large cap 76, mid cap 74, and small cap 71. Two strongest sectors um, 
technology and U.S. large caps. And then the two weakest sectors are U.S. small caps and uh, Europe. So there's quite a, quite a deviation here just inside the U.S. markets between the large caps and the small. Small caps continue to lag. So a quick look at the sector spiders that make up the S&P 500. The strength is in energy and technology right now. World market model. Uh, every, let's see, mids and large are above average. Uh, technology exceptionally so. Uh, U.S. small caps across the board are below average. Uh, Japan above average. Asia list Japan below average. Now strength in... India, Thailand, Philippines, Indonesia, and Singapore, weakness everywhere else. Uh, Latin America and Brazil have come back to earth a little bit here as leadership shifts back to the U.S. Inside the business sectors, uh, hat tip goes to the U.S. With the, except for utilities and healthcare, but strength across the board here in energy and technology. These are the uh, uh, ETF2 uh, top 30s uh, based on that ETF2 lens. And that gives you the same kind of layout as the blended monthly, uh, dominated by India, uh, technology, energy. The Dow 30 through the same lens. Disney should be on our radar with a green and white, as should uh, American Express, early strength leader. Pfizer with a yellow and red, and JP Morgan with yellow and red may be starting their little turnaround moves now. Uh, Visa and Nike also on the upswing. Shifting to the daily, uh, quite a few signals to choose from, and we'll go over those charts of interest in the webinar tonight for members. And that's where we, we frame the trades out in detail. Dow tactical summary, uh, quite a few dojis, uh, signals all over the board for uh, different swing patterns. Um, two signals, check out on the auto framer, better than two to one Goldman Sachs and Home Depot. Lots of good frog candidates in here. And uh, DuPont is, it should be of interest with an RSI 2 value of six. It's number four on the MPRC, max pain range compression. It's a five day down and also a channeling. In the ETF 30, um, lots of good channeling and overreaction signals of 5DD in, in agriculture and lots of uh, auto framers to choose from better than two to one and uh, ag, Russell small caps and mixed commodities uh, all in the single digits here for RSI2. So IWM should definitely be on our short list. It was basically flat on Friday, has an RSI2 value of six, tests out at 5.2 to one. On the auto framer is number two on the max pain range compression and offers both channeling and overreaction patterns. More specific stats on the auto framer and on the regression line fractal framework, I've added the S&P 500 uh, stats for the top and the bottom five in terms of excursions from their long-term uh, trend line. Uh, the regression line and the polynomial regression line basically flat. Uh, had a nice little pullback here. If we just get the same behavior as the last time, we're looking at another, you know, four bucks. This should get it above 200 on this next surge. You can see that the slope of the regression line is pulled back. When we zoom in, we see it's come back to the six-month average, uh, as has the percent stretch above the 200-day moving average here, right at eight percent on a historical basis, same using uh, the 10 year stats uh, to set the boundaries for these different statistical thresholds. You can see where we are in terms of steepness uh, of the curve. Just flash through the rest of these for your reference, but without comment. Price with respect to the river here, you can see it riding that north shore on the green line. It's still favorable. This is a good place for it to continue to resume. It has the last one, two, three times that it was there. <coughs> <coughs> 
The 10 period regression line has come back to its own zero line. The 30 has dipped back into um, this range of normal. The 90 still remains strong uh, at the upper end of uh, normal at, with a z-score about 1.0. Very favorable uh, pattern here with the train just climbing up that mountain. And that's everything I want to cover for today. So this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital. Keep your risk measured and your powder dry.